What is going on, nerd paraders and fellow citizens, or should I say fellow bounty hunters? Welcome here to the channel. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me here today as we talk about bounty hunting in Star Citizen and some of the absolute best ships to do it in. Before we dig deeper into the video, though, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Nick. This is Nerd Parade, and let's kick it off right, shall we? So bounty hunting, it's one of my favorite things to do in the game, and if you're watching this video, it's likely one of your favorite things to do in the game. And one of the best ships, in my opinion, to do it in, especially the higher tier bounty missions, is probably not going to surprise many of you Star Citizen veterans out there, but it is going to be the Aegis Eclipse. It has the ability to shoot size 9 concentrated freedom rods of absolute destruction, one-shotting some of the strongest ships currently in the game. Yes, that's right, concentrated freedom. If you're watching this video because you're trying to decide whether or not you'd like to get Star Citizen, please make sure that you don't make a similar mistake that I did. You may notice that I put a code up here at the top of the screen. That is a referral code for Star Citizen. I did not use one because I didn't know about it when I first started the game, but make sure that you use one if you're new because you get free in-game goodies and bonuses for using one. Also, the person whose code you use benefits as well. It's a mutually beneficial type thing. My code will remain up here at the top of the screen for the remainder of the video, and I'll also put it in the video description for easy copy pasta purposes. Now, as we sail over here towards our target at a very slow speed, I might add so that I can talk about what I'm doing, you can min-max your detection radius a bit while you're doing these missions. Let me start by saying this is 100% unnecessary. You do not need to do this. You can zoomy zoom and boomy boom and everything's going to be fine. But if you kind of feel like gaming the system or you want to be a, a bit more stealthy, stealth doesn't fully exist in Star Citizen yet, but we can game it a bit. So you have your EM score and your IR score, uh, electromagnetic and infrared. So here are the tricks. You could go over here. I've not turned off both, but you can turn off one of your shields to reduce your EM score. You can change your MFD or multifunction display to heat and then suppress your overall IR, which drops that score down quite a bit. Now that that's done, we'll change our MFD back to weapons. And I've already done this, but we want to turn off our guns. The guns are basically pea shooters on the Eclipse anyway. They're, they're, they're kind of butt. So you can turn those off, which further reduces your EM score. And I've come over here to the power management, and since we're not really using weapons, we're using holes of concentrated freedom booms. I've put most of my uh, power management into shields, in case we happen to take a couple of shots, and then thrusters. These little tricks are, are quite minor, but it may help you if you're noticing that you're getting detected as you're moving in for your first couple attempts to drop. So we haven't quite got the hammerhead in our range yet, but we do have the... Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so now that we've got them targeted, I'm going to slow down a little bit. You don't need to be going super fast for this, although you can. And I'm, you know, I am going to go a little bit quicker here. I like to drop uh, right around the four to three thousand meter range. So right when we like between four and three thousand. So here we go. And but here we go. We'll fire it away. So we're dropping now. And we're going to get a real super satisfying sound that says kill as we zoom out. There it is. Hi, one shot. We just one shot a hammerhead. A hammerhead. Now, I know that last one went by pretty quick. It's really all there is to it with this. So we're going to do it again because it's fun. And you can like chain these missions back to back until you need to re-outfit your, uh, re your, your eclipse with more poles of freedom. So you got to land and restock. It is a little expensive to do it. So we're at four. Now we're at three. There goes another one. I'm gonna get a super satisfying message here in a second. Oh, countermeasures. There's the kill. I fired off way more countermeasures than I needed to because I was getting blinded by the sun. And later, dude, we're out of here. Now that I've gotten you amped up with big booms against even bigger ships, we're gonna talk a little bit about bounty hunter missions on my extremely blinding menu. That was an explosion. So if you're a veteran Star Citizen player and you already know how this works, you can skip ahead a little bit in the video and we're going to continue to talk about spaceships. For th those of you who are unfamiliar with how this works, in the beginning, when you first start your bounty hunting career, you're going to be given a mission to where you track down a bounty and you have to pay a fee for it. You're going to earn a license to do this. Once you have done that, 
we'll come over here to this. It's called our Delphi tab, which deals with reputation. You'll notice you're earning reputation for a Bounty Hunters Guild. There are a bunch of tiers, but as you advance, you unlock harder and harder missions. At Junior, you unlock LRT. At Guild Member, you unlock HRT, and so on and so forth. VHRT, and then finally the one that we just did, ERT. You have to do the missions to earn the reputation to then unlock the harder tier missions. Since you're still hanging out here with me, I hope it means it's because you like the content. If you do, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. It helps support me and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post new videos. Now let's talk about what my favorite ship is to climb the reputation totem pole for the bounty hunter missions in order to unlock the harder and harder tiers. Let me say that any combat ship will really work here in this instance. My favorite personal ship to do it in is the Vanguard series, is what you see here before you. The reason why is it's pretty tanky, it's got some pretty good shields on it, and it's also got some pretty good guns on it. That is a size 5 hardpoint with a size 4 gun gimbaled at the moment, and uh, four size 2s on the nose, it's pretty sweet. And it's even got a turret if you want to bring a friend along, because they are also going to bring friends along, and those friends are going to be shooting at you, because we're not jumping in really quick, dropping a bomb, and dipping out like we did with the Eclipse. Now you can use the Eclipse to talk about it a little bit more. You can use the Eclipse to climb the Reputation Totem Pole. However, I do not recommend doing that. The reason why is because the Eclipse has three torpedoes, as you saw. That means if everything goes correctly in your mission, you can chain three of them together before you either need to rearm your ship at a spaceport or outpost, or blow up your ship and wait the 15 minute claim timer for the insurance. The lower missions don't pay out enough to really offset the cost of rearming the Eclipse, so for those reasons I don't recommend it. Since I got slightly distracted talking about the Eclipse, again my favorite for climbing the ladder is the Vanguard series, and the one you see before you is the Vanguard Sentinel. It's my personal favorite of the variant, but if you have a favorite ladder climber for bounty hunters or a favorite of the Vanguard series that you'd like to share with me, please be sure to do that in the comments below. All right, it's that time. If you're a Star Citizen veteran, you probably guessed what the cousin to the Eclipse was, but we have the Retaliator. The reason why I've saved the Retaliator for last is a glaring flaw that currently exists with the Retaliator that may be fixed in the future or it may not. That glaring flaw is that it flies like a drunk space wombat that got into your weird uncle's secret stash. It's just... Bad. It, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it handles pretty poorly. The good side is it essentially doubles the Eclipse's payload, meaning that instead of three size nine poles of concentrated freedom, it brings six. So you could potentially chain six missions, ERTs specifically, back to back by doing this. It's definitely tankier than the Eclipse, which is a fantastic thing. So you don't have to instantly in and out because it doesn't really handle that well. So it's that, that's kind of a good thing. But it still functions more or less the same. We're going to take it out on a trip here now so I can show you the gameplay loop is relatively the same as the Eclipse. So arguably the Retaliator is preferred, but there is a learning curve, we'll say, when it comes to handling. If you're familiar with other ships in Star Citizen uh, of this class and size, let's say the Constellation series, you would expect this to handle better or equivalent to the Constellation series. However, at the current moment, it handles much worse. So for that reason, I recommend the Eclipse for these missions. But we're going to take this bad boy out so you can see him in action. No fancy stuff like the Eclipse this time. We're not messing with any of the EM or IR score. We are just going right at him and this drunken space wombat. As soon as these guys turn red, uh, which one's the hammerhead? There you are. Hello, hammerhead. I hope you're not inside of that asteroid or anything weird. We're getting close. Oh, this is going to be butt. Uh, I'm going to have to dip out of here like real weirdly quick. And this guy handles so strange. And we're going to get into the same range that we were with the eclipse. Three, two, one. We'll drop it here now. Before I hit the rock, pull up before I hit the rock, pull up before I hit the rock. Oh, that's bad. I'm gonna hit the rock. Kill. Oh, I landed on the rock. Handles like a wombat. Drug space wombat. I regret everything. What the hell is happening here? Can I at least kill the hammerhead? I need an adult. I need so many adults.
There you are. Okay, let's try this now. Get him. Boom! Kill. Okay, we... <laughs> nice job, Drunk Space Wombat. We got him. It only took three of the six. Yeah. While I do like to meme a little bit on the Retaliator, I am slightly over-exaggerating. While it does handle much worse than it used to, and arguably poorer than a Constellation series, if you're familiar how those work, it still can get the job done. And it does have double the payload of the Eclipse, so you can effectively be out twice as long doing six missions chained together if everything goes well, as opposed to the three. However, my skill at piling the Retaliator is not that great, so I prefer the Eclipse because it's a bit easier to handle, and it might be a bit more novice pilot friendly. I hope you found this video amusing and informational. More on the amusing side. But if it did help you with your bounty hunter career, please be sure to let me know in the comments below, and also include what your favorite ship is in the game. I always love finding that out. If you do have a favorite bounty hunting ship that I didn't happen to cover in this video, be sure to include that too. But this is where I'm going to leave you. If you enjoyed the video, smash the thumbs up button for me. And always remember to take care of yourselves out there and stay awesome. I'll catch you in the next one.